Welcome to the Too Busy Eat Show. I am Greg Zaffalato, the host of this show. Uh, today, I'm, I'm excited to share Kendra Holly with you today. She is an author. She runs a, she has very um, large audiences on social media, and she has a blog called Peace, Love, and Low Carb. Well, she has done an amazing thing of balancing life with uh, demands of a family. Um, before, when she started, she had a, a full-time job, and she was starting this, this blog helping people um, you know, live the low-carb, ketogenic lifestyle without completely um, uh, getting rid of all the things they loved. But she's gone through her own journey. I'm not going to give you too many, too many pieces of it because I want you to hear it yourself from her, but um, it's just an amazing journey, her own health journey. And the amount of people now she's influencing from just started as a passion um, of, of, of creating these recipes and ideas to uh, becoming her full-time business where she, she has a thriving business. She's written, um, she's got two new books coming out. She's, I think, a total of like eight books she's done, which is amazing. So she has a lot of resources. She helps a lot of people. And it started as a passion and it turned into a thriving, thriving business. So let's uh, let's hear from Kendra. And um, before uh, or after the show, you're going to love her. You're going to love, I hope, love the show. I would love you to leave a comment, um, leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. It would be fantastic. Um, and let me know what you think. All right, here's Kendra. Well, welcome, Kendra. I am very excited to have you on the Too Busy Eat Show. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to chat with you today. This is great. I, I've been, you know, looking through all your stuff. I mean, I love the idea that you've created. What I've pulled from a lot of the things you've done is you basically have taken all the, the good stuff that we're not supposed to eat anymore and you've made it good in a, in a low-carb keto world. So I was looking through it this morning and it got, I got really hungry because your <laughs> stuff you've created is looks really awesome. So, so yeah, th thanks for that. Thanks for the work you're doing and have done. It's, it's pretty exciting. Thank you. I feel excited too. I mean, it kind of sounds a little cliche, but every day I wake up and I think I get to do this, not yes. I have to do this. And it's such a cool place to come from after years of working for someone else. That is very cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To be able to forge your own path, to create, be creative like you are. And that's, that's really, that's really nice. Yeah. So why don't you give us a little background on, on your journey that is taking you from working from other people and through your journey. Um, I know there's a lot of pieces of it as I've been reading, but um, until to the journey to you, to where you are now. You know, I always kind of tell people that I got an accidental business out of it, <laughs> you know. I yeah. uh, started with a desire to lose weight and a friend that had said, hey, you want to try the Atkins diet with me? Like, we can eat bunless burgers and like we can <laughs> drink like low-carb beer and, you know, presented to me not from a whole food nutritional right, standpoint. Right, right. And I was like, all right, I'll try it. I like Let's burgers. do it. <laughs> yeah. Do it. And the weight started coming off yeah, really fast. Right, right. And I started wanting to find all my favorite foods, kind of like you were just saying, and I wanted to fit them into that template. Right. I didn't want right. to say I can never eat this again because yeah. I eat low carb, I eat keto. Okay, now this is off the table. Right, right. So I knew that if I was going to find any success in what I was doing and my own personal weight loss journey, that I had to find creative ways to recreate all my favorite comfort foods. Yeah. So just with like first generation iPhone, actually, I think I had a Blackberry at the time, oh, uh, nice. <laughs> like in a dimly lit kitchen, I was just taking pictures of everything that I was eating. Wow. And at first I wasn't even really writing it down. And yeah. someone said, you should start a blog. Right. And so I did, but I had it on private settings, kind of like a journal. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> just like, recording. Yeah. Recording yeah. it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then someone said, you know, Facebook was really booming and they said, yeah. you should start a Facebook page. And I did. <laughs> and then it just kind of like, I have a text message that I saved that I sent to one of my friends that I said, I have 354 followers. Can you believe? <laughs> and then she said, you're a superstar. And then, yeah. you know, now it's like 150,000. I'm about to say, months. you've right. um, exponentially grown that. <laughs> yeah. And so it just, it kind of grew from there. And then yeah. Like I love to learn and I'm a chronic right. researcher and yeah, yeah. I'm always just trying to up my game. So I said, maybe I could like do something with this. Yeah. You know? and I was just on a blogger platform doing all my own HTML coding, like, <laughs> and like from Google HTML tutorials. Wow. Yes. Like 
I'm the kind of person, like, if you ask me a question and if I was like, gee, Greg, I don't know. No one will ever ask me that question again. And I won't ever, it's with me saying, I don't gonna know. Figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. And so um, from there, I just really kind of started sinking my time and my efforts into it. And I really believe that, you know, kind of like how you would dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Right. If you, if you think there's any chance that a hobby could turn into a career, treat it from a career, like a career from day one. Right. Right. So I was still working. I was working. I was a restaurant manager Okay. and going home and, you know, cooking on the side. And then from there, I just researching, networking, um, like really focusing on what would drive traffic to my site, um, teaching myself how to be a better photographer, um, and things like that. And then it's just been a whirl in the last six years of constantly learning and growing. Now, and so you're, I mean, what I get is everything you've done, you're really self-made. You've just, you see a task, you see a challenge, whether it's coding or learning, you know, different recipes, you just dive in and figure it out. Yeah. I mean, it's a hundred percent self-taught. I didn't take yeah. any courses and um, I just, I love to learn. Yeah. And you loved, and, and a byproduct of that seems like, I mean, apparently what you've produced, you love to educate too, because you have written a lot of, you've created a lot of books, you've done a lot of writing. Uh, kind of walk us to that part of the journey, because from what I counted on the website, I see there's eight, eight books, or you've got a lot of things out there. There is a lot of stuff going on. So um, I, after it got going for a while, I think it was about only a year and a half in, you know, it's always someone kind of planting a seed. Someone said, you should write a book. And I was like, I should write a book. And <laughs> I, should. I, I, you're right, I should do that. I have 150 followers on Facebook. I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> or 350. Like yeah. my neighbor, my uncle and my mom follow me. Like, let's do a book. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I didn't even pitch publishers. I just right. said, I'm going to self-publish. Like I'm still yeah. small. And so I self-published a hundred recipe full length print book. Wow. And, That's a lot um, of work. It was, it yeah. was a lot of work and all the work I do now though, makes that just seem like it was like a walk in the park. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. and then from there I wrote some digital products, um, different eBooks kind of just filling needs. So mm-hmm. people would say, what are some good low carb side dishes? So I wrote a low carb side dish ebook, right. Right. you know, and then, um, then I started writing meal planning. Okay. And it just kind of came about, it's, you know, it's a win-win because it's a revenue stream for me, but yeah. it's putting a resource out into the world that people ask for. So it's, yes. it's a solution to yeah. a problem yeah. and then I get paid to do it. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. And then I eventually ended up getting professionally published. My first full length uh, book with a publisher came out about two and a half years ago. Okay. And I have several more coming out in the new year. I know you do. I oh, I'm so those. excited. Wait, is it, was the first uh, with the publisher, the Primal Low Carb Kitchen Cookbook? Yes. Or, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then wh- now I know what they are. Tell, tell us a little bit about the, the I mean, I'm excited because they're they're coming. Uh, tell they us a little bit about the new new books coming out. So I have a full length one called Craveable Keto. Okay. And it comes out January 23rd. And it's 145 recipes. They're all low carb, keto friendly, gluten free, of course. A lot of them um, are even dairy free, making them paleo. Yeah. But... In addition to that, I packed a lot of resources and my heart and soul into the front matter of the book. So there is, it's basically like a, I wanted it to be like a one-stop shop for someone saying, I want to try this new lifestyle. How do I do it without getting overwhelmed? Because there's so much information. Yes. Yes. And then a lot of it is my own personal story because I really believe that in the power of connection and that true authentic connection sells. So for me, I get to share my heart and if even one person were to look through the front of that book and feel less alone, then I would yeah, feel like I did my yeah, job. Yeah. Which is a very strange thing to say about a cookbook, but I might even be more proud of the things in the front than the actual recipes. Yeah, but you can get to a whole new audience that you may yeah. not have gotten to with this now because they get a cookbook and now all of a sudden they hear your story that could resonate with them and really change their life. And I, I've always made it my mission from the very beginning to let people know that I'm not just a robot behind the screen plugging away at a keyboard, you know, that I'm, that I'm a person. And a lot of my followers, they can tell you the names of every single one of my dogs. They, can, <laughs> they, they know my husband's name, you know, yeah. because I'm putting myself out there. And so yeah. there's a lot of that in the book as well. Right. And I'm proud to open up and be vulnerable yeah. um, because I'm not just a girl who likes food. I'm a girl who struggled with her weight her whole life, who likes food. 
Yeah. And it gives it a unique dynamic from a lot of, a lot of other authors and cookbook authors. Yes. Yeah. 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 You've personally been through it and this, this, what you're sharing has helped you, you know, um, through your journey, which is, which is fantastic. And I, I agree a hundred percent that personal connection, um, in, whether it's a biography or a cookbook, it doesn't matter. That personal connection carries a lot of weight and uh, it's what um, it really, really touch. It, connects to people and, and, and will, will sell books, but it will change in the process of changing lives. I mean, it's great. Yeah. yeah and I, I feel like in the world of connectivity in this digital society, mm -hmm. we're less connected with people than we've ever been before. Right. And right. so I want to bring some of that back. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. It's that, that really we have so much surface connection. It's not that no depth to it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So how have you balanced? I mean, you've done it a lot. I mean, a lot of resources, you have a blog. Um, uh, how have you balanced that? Cause you have family. You mentioned you have the dog, you have a, you have a husband and kids. And, and um, at first you had a, a job and you were doing this. Now, how over the time have you been able to manage that and do all of you that you've done? To be completely candid, sometimes I manage it better than others. Sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm running around like just like a raging lunatic. <laughs> like, <laughs> but uh, it's it's a fine balancing act, yeah. you know, and it's constant checks and balances. Like, am I making time for self care? Yeah. Am I giving time to my husband and my family and my friends? Because if I don't keep those things in place and constantly check in with them and how I'm feeling, right. this can be a really isolating business because sure. I work from home and yeah. I'm yeah. home all the time. And it's, you know, sometimes I'm like, when's the last time I drove my car? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, <laughs> so it's just, it's every day. I, I have yeah. to work at it every day. Yeah. 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 And there's little things, yeah. yeah. Like I try to do little things. Like I'm trying to work where, um, I have a habit of I'm not in the kitchen and I'm on my computer. Right. Then I bring my laptop into the living room, which should be like, hey, let's watch a show with my husband. Let's, and right. I'm like plugging away. And so I'm really trying to work on like shutting the office door. The day is done. Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's tough. We had an online yeah. world, connectivity world, uh, the Instagram and Facebook. And you have, you know, um, even simply as email, it's just always on, it's always demanding of your time, I'm sure. And all your devices are synced and all the alerts. And, yeah. But for me, I think the hardest part about me finding balance is that I love what I do so much yes. that I want to do it. So right. when we're on vacation, I start jonesing for it because I <laughs> love it. Yeah. You know? yeah. But with that, I will go and go and go and go and go and not have an off switch to where I'll get past the point of, okay, you missed a lot of self-care and you're really stressing yourself right. out. Right. Right. Yeah. So now at that, on that, that self-care and you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner on your own. How do you manage uh, both two things? One is like productivity. Like how do, you, how do you manage your day to where you, I know you said you love it, but how do you make sure you have a, you're productive, you're moving forward in projects when you're the only one telling you, telling you what to do? You're on your own. You know, it's tricky. And that's the one thing that a lot of my friends and family or even just strangers say, oh, I could never do that. I'm not self-starting enough for that. Right. And I think that's just kind of in my nature. But at the same time, it's not really any different than going in and punching a clock because if I don't do all those things, the house of cards falls. Yes. You know? So like somebody say, gosh, but don't you ever just want something to watch TV all day? And I'm like, yeah. And some days I do. And I just work <laughs> twice as much the next day, but right. you yeah. have to keep going because yeah. it, you know, it's, you, you don't get a paycheck if you don't work. And it's the same when you own your own business. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, it looks different because you don't have, but it's the same result. You don't, your the money stops if you don't, keep working. Yeah. You know, and I have been at fault for like, I'm a very type a person. And I think that a lot of entrepreneurs are, yep. um, and I grew this from a hobby that I never thought I wanted to be a business into a brand, like a recognizable yeah. brand. And it was really, really hard to hand that over because my name is synonymous with peace, love and low carb. And right. so I would that, well, they're not going to do it as good as I do, but <laughs> I did recently hire a full-time assistant. Oh, nice. Uh, and it has made a big difference, especially as I try to wrap up these books. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah. Not yeah. you're not just launching one book. We didn't get to the second book. Oh so, yeah. Craveable keto, which yes. is your story, and you have, but you have another one. 
coming out the same time or I have, it's actually going to be kind of a whirlwind year in 2018. (laughs) So in February, uh, February 20th, I believe I have a book coming out called keto happy hour. Okay. And again, it's, it's solution based, but one of the biggest questions is, can I have alcohol on a low carb diet? Right. Right. If people who are tracking ketosis, will alcohol kick me out of ketosis? You know, what are some low carb options I can have when I'm out with friends or when I'm entertaining? And so I wrote a drink book. And that's, I, I, yeah. that is unique. I've, I, cause I'm, I'm a keto guy. So yeah. I am always searching online for different drinks and stuff. And, and I, uh, this is, I'm, I'm very excited about this, this book. <laughs> and so I like, I recreated all the classics and you have yeah, to be, yeah. you have to be creative and then it'll have all the nutritional information in right, there. Right. And um, there's some food recipes to go with it. And then basic bar techniques um, mm-hmm. and how to, pair your drinks and your foods and how to host a party and things like that. But that's a, that is very, very unique. I I know nothing out there like that. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I had signed on to do multiple projects with my publisher. Right. And then <laughs> in true Kendra fashion, I called him. I said, I have an idea. Are you interested in this? Because if not, I was just going to make it into an e Right. I was going to do it yeah. whether you wanted to be involved yeah. or not. And he said, you know, it's very niche. It's a little risky, but I like it. That's yeah, it. yeah. I like it. Yeah, he said, oh, CrossFitters are going to love this. He's like, CrossFitters love their fitness and their booze. So. <laughs> yes, that, you're right. That is, yeah. I used to be a pretty devout CrossFitter, so I fit that mold. Yeah. Okay, yeah, same here. It's more in my garage these days, but I actually yes. have my level one too. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. That's a, that's a great, uh, it was a, that was a fun certification. Pro- I did the level one too. And, yeah. and uh, it's a, but you're, you're, spot on about the, the CrossFitters and their work hard, exercise play hard. and play hard. Yeah. yeah. Work hard, play hard. That's really neat. Really neat. So um, what does, what does, you mentioned self-care, what does that look like for you? What's going to recharge you to keep you going when you have demands of the family, publishers, you know, your blog, your, your, your following, uh, what, what's self-care for you? Um, for me, it's making time for workouts and okay. at the very least yoga, because I can kind of reset my, my yeah. mind. I do a lot of yoga. Okay. Um, going for massages, but a lot of it also is just quiet time where I disconnect and I read a book or I just, I just be present and not online in any capacity. Right. Like I just let my brain download kind of, you know, so sometimes it's simple as saying, okay, for the first hour that I'm awake in the morning, Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to my husband. I'm going to drink, drink coffee. I'm going to read a couple chapters in my book. I'm usually working on one for that's like personal and professional development and one that's fiction. So I'm going to read. um, And then I'm not going to open my eyes, nightstand, phone, Apple watch, you know, (laughs) all of those things because I do it a lot. And so that that, sometimes it's not in anything fancy like massage. Sometimes it's just quiet moments that I make sure that I I steal for myself. Yeah. That, that is very good self-care of, of, Somebody that is, has to be so connected because of your that's your job to disconnect. Yeah, that, that sounds very um, uh, refreshing. I mean, really, you recharge when you get disconnected and then you're ready to go back at it. It's yeah. amazing how hard it can be to carve out those 15 minutes for yourself without thoughts of, I could be doing this, I should yes. be doing yeah. this. Well, especially when you have a, the demands keep piling up and you're like, well, I got to get this done, this done, this done. But if you don't take care of yourself, then your product productivity and you get all out of, out of balance and then you're not efficient at what you do, which is so it's good. Yeah. And you, and you nailed it there. I mean, if I, it's almost like I start being defiant in my own brain, I'm sitting there <laughs> and the wheels are spinning, but I'm not really working. And yes, then it's yes. like, okay, I'm like, I told, I, and I usually tell my husband, like, I, I can tell that I need to recharge when I start to feel like I only exist online. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yes. You're like, I, do. I, like, am... I don't exist in the real world. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, you're this entity out there in cyberspace, right? You need it. Yeah. That's pretty, that's very telling. Yes. I mean, that, that's not, we like, we love dogs. That's great. Yeah. You have five, and by the way, there's, you, you mentioned you have five, five rescue dogs. I do. You know, and I, a lot of what fuels what I do now is that I have my heart very much lies in dog rescue. Oh, wow. And my husband and I have talked about, um, if not owning our own rescue, yeah. like making, a sizable charitable donation to right. companies that are out there, um, you know, nonprofits that are yeah. helping for rescue dogs. That's so right. a huge part of my mission that drives my business yeah. is the drive to save dogs because we already have five. We can't save them all in our own <laughs> home. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. you have to go out and buy a farm and but then yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that that's neat but it gives you that's another uh i mean it, i'm sure it developed over your just love for dogs but it's another way of removing it's so different than what you do on a day-to-day -day basis you're pouring into you know rescue dogs and that that cause that's pretty that, that's part, I think that's part of, it seems to be part of that whole life balance where you're not just in one area all the time and getting that, getting out in different things and exposing yourself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, what would you, what piece of advice would you give you, your personal journey? I mean, you went through, as you mentioned, you know, personal journey of weight loss and, uh, for, and you're at that <clears throat> a point where you were you know, eating, you were eating that low carb, but you were, it wasn't a health, in the health, you weren't healthy, but you were, you were going into it. So somebody that was in that, in that place, they want to make a change in their life. Uh, what advice would you give to that person on taking first steps and kind of changing their life uh, health wise? I think my number one piece of advice would be just to keep it simple and okay. don't, don't, I mean, you can kind of end up in analysis paralysis and there's so many resources and there's such an uptick in keto right now yeah. my advice would be keep it simple and focus on whole real foods oh, simple whole real food that's that's a great I mean, yeah. yeah there's uh, there's unlimited potential in meat and vegetables yeah. for recipes you yes. know a fat, Absolutely. A meat, vegetables and a fat like yes. it's just but i think people they get really caught up in the kind of how I built my brand actually recreating things. But if you're really trying to make sustainable change in weight loss, like don't jump right in and be like, Oh, here's low carb cookies. Here's low carb. And then, you know, if you don't change what was broken, <laughs> just a band aid. Yes. Yes. That's so right. okay. I would say before you start venturing out into like the low carb pizzas and the things like that, really just relearn about food. Food in its simplest form, whole single ingredients that don't need a nutrition label because they're real food. They're real foods. Yes. yes. It's not hard to figure out what foods fit in, in those whole real foods fit into low carb because um, like you said, you know, healthy fats, meats and vegetables, you're there, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that combo is endless. Really. But yeah, my, so I just would say, keep it simple because it can be so overwhelming. And then when you get overwhelmed, what are you going to do? You're going to yeah. order a pizza. You're going to get That's right. Food. That's right. Yeah. You're going to say, this is too hard and I can't do it. It's not for me. Yeah. So keep it simple. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And you help with, you help with that personally with you do meal planning, you do things on that nature also that some of your resources do that for people keeping it. Yeah. Yeah. And I try to keep them inexpensive. Obviously I don't want to give away everything for free because this is my business. I do yeah. this full time and I have for years, but my meal plans are only $4.99 a, a week. Right. Yeah. So with That's that right. is a complete shopping list. There's yeah, resources, yeah. there's the full recipe, there's pictures, yeah. uh, tips for meal planning and meal prep and how to make your food go farther, how to stretch your grocery budget, you know? So there's a lot built in to be able to give something at an affordable price that really kind of helps people in the very beginning stages set themselves up for success. Right. And, and that's great. And it's a, it, it, it's a, it's a value for everybody and it's not, it's not too far reaching for them. It's not a program costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars to start. It's keeping it simple and yeah. accessible. Well, and there are a lot of hundreds of dollars yes, programs is. out there. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you what's next, but I mean, you have, there's, I mean, you have two, books launching next, but is that, what do you see like going forward with your, your business? Um, what do you, what do you see going, yeah, what do you see going forward with your business? I just want to continue to grow it and maybe across different social channels. Right. And, um, I do a lot on Instagram and I enjoy doing like Instagram mm -hmm. live videos. And so yeah. I kind of feel like the future of what I'm doing now lies in video, um, right. whether it okay. be, um, video podcasts or even just a regular yeah. audio podcast right. or YouTube or Instagram. So I think in addition to recipe development, I'll be expanding those areas that have kind of been lacking yeah. in my business. That's great. So you're just, yeah. you're, you're doing how you started this thing. You find something you don't know how to do it. You research it, you figure it out, and then you go do it. Yeah. You do it well, which is Thank a, a pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I have a lot of, I'm kind of an endless supply of ideas for things that I would like to see where I would like to see peace, love and low carb go. But at the end of the day, I am only one person. And so sometimes my 
I, I need a clone. My idea yeah, is like, yes. my ideas exceed what I can do to capacity. So I have a lot of exciting ideas yeah. and things I want to do with the site as my time frees up after the books. That's, that's great. So there's a, a bright future, exciting future. And, um, and you'll, you'll, no matter what you do, you're going to keep learning new things. So that's, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, bless. So, so I know there's going to be people that want to connect with you. Best place to find you. What would they, where would they go? So my site is peace, love, and low mm -hmm. Um, if you search for, even if you search for peace, love, and low carb or Kendra Holly, um, yeah. every thing is going to be me. So across <laughs> all social channels, um, Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, my blog, Instagram, they're all peace, love, and low carb, peace, so, love, and low carb anywhere. Peace, You're going to find it. Yes. Yeah. And it's, uh, and is spelt out, not an ampersand. So, right. But I mean, okay. I think even that would still bring it up. It would, yes. Yeah. You're dominating that space for sure. And we'll have yeah. it in the show notes for people to be able to click and go right to you. But that's um, exciting. I really thank you. I'm so excited for your uh, – you have a fan here. I'll be buying oh, you both your books. You. Thank you yeah. so much. Um, I ex I'm excited about that launch for you. I do wish you the best. And I thanks. I know you, you're pulled in a lot of directions, so I, I appreciate you taking the time to be on the show today. Again, thanks for having me. It was great. And, yeah. and good luck with the multiple launches. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much.